Whatever you are doing, bring love and a positive attitude into it. If you are in an uncomfortable situation, look within to see what is the best lesson for you to learn from it. One woman told me that her belief system allowed money to come to her from all sorts of unexpected sources. Her friends criticized her ability to draw wealth to her in her unique way and insisted that she had to work hard to earn money. She said that they knew she didn't work hard at all. So she began to run the fear that if she didn't work hard, that meant that she didn't deserve the money she had. Her consciousness was on the right track originally. She needed to thank herself instead of becoming fearful. She understood how to manifest abundance, and her life was working in that area without any struggle. However, her friends wanted to pull her down because they all worked hard and they didn't have as much money as she did. Many times I reach out my hand to others, and if they take it and want to learn new things and go places, it's wonderful. If they try and drag me down, I say goodbye, and I work with somebody who really wants to come up out of the mud. If your life is filled with love and joy, don't listen to some miserable, lonely person who tells you how to run your life. If your life is rich and abundant, don't listen to someone who is poor and in debt tell you how to run it. Very often our parents are the ones telling us how to do things. They often come from a place of burden and hardship and misery and then try to tell us how to run our lives. Many people worry about the economy and believe they will either earn or lose money due to the economic situation at present. However, the economy is always moving up and down. So it doesn't matter what is happening out there or what others do to change the economy. We are not stuck because of the economy. No matter what is happening out there in the world, it only matters what you believe about yourself. If you have a fear about becoming homeless, ask yourself, where am I not at home within myself? Where do I feel abandoned? What do I need to do to experience inner peace? All outer experiences reflect inner beliefs. I have long used the affirmation, my income is constantly increasing. Another affirmation I like is, I go beyond my parents' income level. You see, you have a right to earn more than your parents did. It's almost a necessity as things cost more now. Women especially experience a lot of conflict with this one. Often they find it difficult to earn more than their fathers are earning. They need to go beyond their feelings of not deserving and accept the abundance of financial wealth that is their divine right. Your job is only one of many channels of an infinite source of money. Money is not the object of your right work. Money can come to you in many ways and from many avenues. No matter how it comes, accept it with joy and as a gift from the universe. A young lady was complaining that her in-laws were buying her new baby all sorts of nice things and she could not afford to buy anything. I reminded her that the universe wanted that baby to be well supplied with an abundance of all good and used the in-laws as a channel to supply it. She then could be grateful and appreciate the way in which the universe was providing for her baby. Relationships on the Job the relationships we create at work are similar to the relationships we have as a family. They can be healthy or they can be dysfunctional. A woman once asked me, as a person who is usually positive, how do I deal with people in a work environment who are constantly negative? First of all, I thought it interesting that she was in a work environment where everybody was negative when she said she was positive. I wondered why she was attracting negativity to her. Perhaps there was some negativity within her that she did not recognize. I suggested that she start to believe for herself 
that she always worked in an area where it was peaceful and joyful, where people really appreciated each other and life as a whole, where there was respect on all sides. Instead of complaining how so-and-so had to do it his way, she could affirm for herself that she always worked in the ideal place. By adopting this philosophy, she could either help bring out the best qualities in others because they would be responding differently to her inner changes, or she would find herself in another work arena where the conditions would be as she declared. A man once told me that when he started his job, he had all these incredible instincts and his job was wonderful and sailed along smoothly. He was precise, direct, and satisfied. Suddenly he began to make mistakes every day, and I asked him what he was frightened of. Could it be an old childhood fear that was surfacing? Was there someone at work with whom he was angry, or was he trying to get even with somebody? Did that person remind him of one of his parents? Had this happened in other jobs? It seemed to me that he was creating some chaos at work because of an old belief system. He recognized that it was an old family pattern where he was ridiculed every time he made a mistake. I suggested that he forgive his family and affirm that he now has wonderful, harmonious relationships at work where people totally respect him and appreciate everything he does. When you think of your co-workers, don't think, oh, they're so negative. Everybody has every quality in them, so respond to the good qualities that are in them and respect their peacefulness instead. When you can focus on these qualities, they will rise to the surface. If others are constantly saying negative things, don't pay attention. You want to change your consciousness. Since they are reflecting something negative within you, when your consciousness really changes, negative people won't be around very much. Even if you feel frustrated, start affirming what you want to have in your workspace. Then accept it with joy and thanksgiving. One woman had an opportunity at work to do what she loved and to grow from the experience. However, she would constantly get sick and sabotage herself. She recalled that when she was a child, she was always getting sick because it was her way of getting love and affection. So she kept recreating the pattern of getting sick as an adult. What she needed to learn was how to get love and affection in a more positive way. When anything went wrong at work, she went right back to being the five-year-old girl. So when she began to take care of her little inner child, she also learned to feel safe and to accept her power. Competition and comparison are two major stumbling blocks to your creativity. Your uniqueness sets you apart from all others. There has never been another person like you since time began. So what is there to compare or compete with? Comparison either makes you feel superior or inferior, which are expressions of your ego, your limited mind thinking. If you are going to compare to make yourself feel a little bit better, then you are saying somebody else isn't good enough. If you put others down, you may think you will raise yourself up. What you really do is put yourself in a position to be criticized by others. We all do this on some level, and it's good when we can transcend it. Becoming enlightened is to go within and shine the light upon yourself so that you can dissolve whatever darkness is in there. I want to say again that everything changes, and what was perfect for you once may not be any more. In order for you to keep changing and growing, you keep going within and listening for that which is right for you in the here and now. Changing the way we do business. For the past several years, I've owned my own business. My motto has been that we open the mail and answer the phone and handle what is in front of us, and there is always plenty to do. As we did this day by day, the business grew from a few people to well over 20 employees. 
we established our business on spiritual principles, using affirmations to open and close meetings. We realized that many other businesses ran on competition, often condemning others, or greed, and we did not want to put that energy out to others, knowing that it would come back to us. We decided that if we were going to live by the philosophy, we were not going to operate under the old concepts of doing business. If problems arose, we would spend time affirming what we wanted to change. We also had a soundproof screaming room where employees could let off steam without being heard or judged. It was also a place where they could meditate or relax, and we supplied it with plenty of tapes for people to listen to. It became a safe haven in times of difficulty. I remember a time when we were having many problems with our computer system, and every day something would break down. Because I believe machines reflect our consciousness, I realized that many of us were sending negative energy to the computers, and we were expecting them to constantly break down. I had an affirmation programmed into the computer. Good morning. How are you today? I work well when I am loved, and I love you. In the morning, when everyone turned on their computers, that message would appear. It's amazing how we had no more problems with our computers. Sometimes we think of things that happen, especially at work, as disasters. But we must look at them for what they are, simply life experiences that always teach us something. I know that I have never had a disaster that did not end up a good learning experience in the end, often moving me to a much better level in life. For instance, recently my company Hay House was not doing so well. Like the economy, our sales would go up and down, and it appeared that sales were down and staying that way, at least for the moment. However, we did not adjust to that, and month after month we were spending more than we took in. Anyone who has owned a business knows that that is not the way to do it. Eventually it looked as if I would lose my business if I didn't take some drastic measures. Those drastic measures included letting go of over half my staff. You can imagine how difficult it was for me to do that. I remember walking into the conference room where all my staff had gathered to deliver the news. I was in tears, but I knew it had to be done. As difficult as it was for all of us, I also trusted that my much-loved employees would soon find new and better jobs, and almost all of them have. Some of them have even started their own businesses and are very successful. At the darkest time, I kept knowing and affirming that this experience would turn out to be for the highest good of all concerned. Of course, everyone else assumed the worst. Rumors were flying that Hay House was belly up, not just within the people I knew, but all over the country. Our sales staff were surprised that so many business people even knew about our company, let alone its financial condition. I have to admit that we took great joy in proving these forecasts wrong. By tightening our belts tremendously, we didn't go belly up. With our smaller staff, and each of us determined to make it work, we've come through it very well. But most importantly, we have learned a lot. In the meantime, Hay House is now doing better than ever. My staff is enjoying their work, and I am enjoying my staff. Even though we are all working harder, the interesting thing is that no one feels that they have too much work to do. We are even getting more books out than we ever had and are attracting much more prosperity in all areas of our lives. I believe that everything does work out for the best in the end, but sometimes it is hard to see that while you are going through the experience. Think of a negative experience that may have happened to you in your work or in your past in general. Perhaps you were fired, or maybe your spouse left you. Now go beyond it and take a look at the big picture. Didn't many good things happen as a result of that experience? I've heard so many times, yes, that was a horrible thing that happened to me, but if it hadn't, I would never have met so-and-so, or start my own business, or admit that I had an addiction, or learn to love myself. 
by trusting the divine intelligence to let us experience life in the way that is best for us, we empower ourselves to actually enjoy everything that life has to offer, the good as well as the so-called bad.